Ohio is terrifying. Even more so, Logan, Ohio is terrifying too. Do not go anywhere because this is a zero budget video you'll want to watch. If this is your first time tuning in or if you are a returning traveler, welcome. Tune into this terrible video before it's too late for the like and subscribe buttons. Remember, Logan, Ohio is terrifying. In the heart of Hocking Hills, where the ancient trees stand tall and the mist curled around the rocks, a small cabin nestled between the cliffs. It was an old family retreat passed down through generations but this summer felt different to Sarah. The air was thick with anticipation and a sense of the unknown seemed to pulse between the surface of the familiar. Sarah arrived with her younger brother, Ben, eager to escape the noise of the city. As they unpacked, a heavy fog rolled in, cloaking the woods in a shroud of mystery. Ben, ever the skeptic, laughed off Sarah's stories of local legends, the spirits that roam the hills, the ghostly whispers that calmed those who dared to listen. Just old tales to scare the kids, he scoffed, tossing a rock into the nearby creek. But that night, as they sat by the fire, winds began to howl, and the trees swayed if whispering its secrets. Sarah's gaze drifted into the shadows beyond the firelight where darkness seemed to dance. Did you hear that? she asked, her heart racing. Hear what? Ben replied, rolling his eyes. Suddenly, a soft, melodic voice floated through the trees, barely discernible, its warm woman's voice calling out in sorrow. Sarah's breath hitched, and she exchanged a glance with Ben. His bravado faltered as the voice grew clearer. Intertwining with the wind, he beckoned them to listen. Let's go check it out, Sarah suggested, her curiosity overpowering her caution. Despite his reluctance, Ben followed the glow of the fire fading between them as they stepped into the thickening fog. The forest felt alive, the trees looming like guardians, their branches stretched out like fingers. The voice led them deeper into the woods where the underbrush rustled and the shadows loomed larger. We should turn back, Ben whispered, his bravado replaced with unease. But Sarah was entranced, the voice sweet and haunting, calling to her, promising answers to questions she hadn't asked yet. Con they continued until they stumbled upon a clearing bathed in moonlight, in which the center stood an ancient yoke, its gnarled branches reaching for the sky like twisted arms. But Sarah was entranced, the voice sweet and haunting. There, at the base of the tree, lay an old cracked stone. There, at the base of the tree, lay an old cracked stone. As they approached, Sarah 
could see the intricate carvings symbols that felt familiar but yet foreign. The voice intensified, now clearly pleading, Help me. The air grew colder and the fog thickened. A figure began to materialize beside the tree. An erythral woman, her face blur of sorrow and longing. Her eyes, however, burned with a fierce intensity. I am trapped, she whispered, her voice trembling, bound to this place by a curse. I need someone to set me free. Ben grabbed Sarah's arm, pulling back. This is crazy. We should leave. But Sarah stood her ground. What do you need? She asked the spirit, her voice steady despite the fear of curling in her stomach. A token of love. The spirit replied, her form flickering like a candle flame. A gift given with pure intent. It'll break the spell. Without thinking, Sarah reached into her pocket and pulled out a small locket, a keepsake from her mother, who had just passed away a year prior. It had always felt like a piece of their family, a symbol of love. Will it work? she asked, heart racing. The spirit's gaze softened. Yes, but once given, you must choose to let it go. Sarah hesitated, glancing at Ben. He was pale, panic rising in his eyes. But she felt a pull, an urgency that was beyond comprehension. With a deep breath, she unclasped the locket and placed it in the spirit's outstretched hand. The moment their fingers touched, a brilliant light erupted from the locket, enveloping the clearing. The spirit's form shimmered, her features became clearer, more serene. Thank you. Her voice like the rustle of the leaves. have set me free. The light dissipated. The spirit dissolved into the night, leaving behind overwhelming sense of peace. The forest felt silent, the oppressive weight lifting as if a storm had just passed. Ben exhaled sharply, looking around in disbelief. What did we just... Yeah, Sarah replied, her heart still racing. We did. They returned to the cabin, the fog beginning to lift. Though the shadows still lingered in the corners of the woods, they felt lighter as if the forest itself had breathed a sigh of relief. Though the shadows still lingered in the corners of the woods, they felt lighter, as if the forest itself had breathed a sigh of relief. That night, as they sat by the fire, Sarah understood that the legends of Hawking Hills weren't just the tales to frighten the children. They were the echoes of the past, Reminders of the love, loss, and the bonds that transcended the deepest of curses. And in that moment felt the mother's presence, a warmth wrapping around her like a blanket, whispering of the solace and the silent whispering of the solace 
and the strength that love can bring even from beyond. I cannot tell you what to believe, but some things like a good cover-up is always bound to happen. Any person can deny or avoid answering questions to what really is going on. This also includes the infamous Bigfoot sightings. Bigfoot is a bipedal ape-man like mammal covered in hair from head to toes. This creature is said to have a height of six foot and up and having primal ape instincts. In primates, it is said to take a male primate and a female to have offspring, such as apes, chimps, orangutans, and most life organisms. However, this is also common knowledge. But if there is one ape man or Sasquatch sighting, there is going to be questions on how the Sasquatch is in existence. Now, if you ask certain governments if Bigfoot exists, they will certainly deny all possibilities. Also, if they come across proof, they will also try to acquire all evidence and then deny the evidence too. Ever since the development of video cameras, reels, and photographs, some evidence has come to light as far as creatures, but of early evidence, even though the reels weren't very long. Also, when the recordings were made, they were not always on the best quality of materials. Usually it showed it was being blurry with an unsteady camera and in black and white grainy quality. And also at the time being, the film itself had to be developed at a later time. Paranormal Witness, a series released by Sci-Fi, then spelled its name S-C-I-F-I, -I, now Sci-Fi, spelled S-Y-F-I, will bring in people to share the paranormal stories of what they have witnessed. At the beginning of the episode, the show depicts that the stories aired on the show are based off of eyewitness accounts. However, during the retelling of the stories, they will give flashbacks of recreations of what happened. I'm not saying the stories are not true, but for one man who ventured out for a hike in the in Oregon found himself being stalked and harassed by a likewise eight-man creature. Ohio is also home to a Bigfoot festival in Logan, Ohio, where Hocking Hills and Southern Ohio, Bigfoot sightings have been on the rise, with being said that it is a more remote region of Ohio, cell phone service is particularly poor once you leave the city or highway areas. Because Bigfoot has been a known spot because Logan, Ohio has been a known spot for Bigfoot sightings, artificial silhouettes of Bigfoot have been put up in various places in public, private views, but also well within plain sight. On a quick side note of Logan, Ohio, there once was an abandoned house, a constructed spherical top and basement with a built-in garage. The idea was to build a house that was 
weather resistant because of the area. Because of its shape, it looked like a snow globe, but the shell was completely made of concrete. Once a man's vision became a local landmark to the town during its construction and time, when Stewart was mostly done creating his snow globe like house, he changed planes of existence and the house went to his family and was subsequently used for storage. Because people are people, the lack of care for the building, the building caught on fire in 2016. The fire the fire investigators had deemed the fire was arson. Like this structure, like this structure, it is a good resemblance of two family hopes and dreams. Though it can be resilient the and stand up to time, though it can be resilient and stand up to time, the only thing bringing everything down like this structure it is a good resemblance to the family of its hopes and dreams though it can be resilient and stand up to time one thing can help bring everything down one thing can help bring everything crumbling down the former house of the stewart family are at a loss for the testament of their grandfather's dreams the community is not really happy with the situation that was at some time at some point the house or landmark was demolished around the time of the fire. As of recording this video, the case has not been solved and there is a $5,000 reward for the capture of the arsonist. With cell phones so readily available, cellular data and a cellular map GPS based system, Traveling through the rougher areas of southern Ohio is not recommended. It is quite easy to get off the beaten road, make a few wrong turns, and find yourself lost in the middle of nowhere without much service to map your way back. They say if you hear banjos, you should head back the way you came. If you hear a dead silence, you are being watched and stalked by Bigfoot. Normally, you would hear normal sounds of nature, birds, bugs, or various animals. This is not what happened to Quinn and Wendy, two experienced hikers who had gotten together in the summer fall, in the summer fall months of the late 2008s. Both of them had cameras, which were a popular thing, but none of those were nothing of today. And were still commonplace. Also, the video cameras were not the same of today. During this hike, Quinn and Wendy had decided to share a headset on their compiled playlist. Now they brought plenty of items for their trip to share and enjoy, but this hike was different, and the both of them would have a hike to remember. As more hours passed, the feeling on the trail was more and more of them being watched. When Wendy turned around, she couldn't see anybody or anything. 
even though she said she couldn't see anything, she thought it was odd and couldn't shake that feeling. They decided to stop and take some pictures of the surrounding wildlife. Deer were known to be in this area due to it being a wooded area. After Quinn and Wendy stopped to take their pictures, they couldn't still shake that feeling. They traveled down a short bit, but they had found an injured hiker headed back to civilization, but there was no use in trying to use cell phones to call out because there wasn't any service. They aided the hiker back, and once they got back into civilization, they took a look at their own pictures, and that's when they realized a hairy ape man was blended into the background. Quinn and Wendy had set out for a full day of hiking. When they got back to their own residence about three weeks later, they had noticed that they had taken several hundred pictures, all of the wildlife, and little over a dozen videos between the two of them. But this is where it gets interesting. None of the photos or videos that they had the hairy ape man creature hidden in them were missing. Somehow they were missing and not on their computer. Even both of them remember transferring the files to view them. Looking back on their journey, neither one of them could recall hearing odd animalistic calls. But between the two of them and myself, when I heard their story, I knew there was something going on. Old Man's Cave is known for and is an all-year tourist spot as well. During the fall and winter months of the year, not only the infamous Bigfoot, Skunk Ape, or Ape Man, or even Sasquatch, if you want to call it, is not the only thing, especially during winter times, lurking around. This creature is known as a Wendigo, has known to lurk in the shadows at night. It was recorded down in mythological text literature, as well as malevolent creature, up to do evil biddings in the winter woods. The creature has said to be human-like characteristics. This creature is also a power-hungry creature, but can also possess its victims to be its next meal. While under the Wendigo's power, or being possessed by the Wendigo, it causes the victims to those under the influence of the Wendigo, whether through possession or otherwise, reportedly experience an irresistible urge to consume large quantities of food coupled with a sense of never being full or satisfied. During this time, additional feelings arise, including a bloodlust for a, a strong desire to harm others. This creature is known for its gluttony. Whether it consumes a victim, it can take on proportional shape that mirrors the person being consumed. I know personally know that still in the making of this video, that cell phone service is still terrible at best in the area because of it being in the woods with hills. This is also why, as a former rideshare driver, I never did like picking up other passengers in this area. I had been traveling north one night to potentially earn more money and in Columbus, but gotten a ride request 
or two from this area. It was a 20 minute drive from Logan and probably somewhere in poor service area. Now I got myself to the designated area, but I had to wait for them, which is normal. After several minutes of waiting, I decided to get out and stretch my legs. Just keeping close to the car, just walking and keeping close to the car, that's when I noticed the glowing red eyes. They were blood red. Now, despite eating an hour before, I had quickly become ravishing and uncontrollably hungry. I'm not just talking I could just have a snack or two. I'm looking at, at and also having two full meals. And then I saw it. It saw me. I saw it look Then we saw each other looking at each other. And it was looking right at me. I was like the next meal. I thought I heard that voice inside me say it right in my ear. Run. I decided to take nothing and leave tire tracks, not looking back. Run. Because of this incident, I was all out of sorts for a couple of days. And it wasn't till after that I saw the scratches on the car. If I hadn't left in a hurry, who knows what would happen. During one anonymous submission, people were hiking and found what looked like a gelatin-like substance oozing and coming from the trees. Despite nearby poison ivy and vines, when they got close enough to take a better look, their danger senses started going off. After taking a closer look at the gel-like spot, this person claimed it moved all on its own, emitted an attractive earth-like smell. Where they, when this person got up to leave, this per, this person tripped over some ivy that wasn't there when they approached the tree, but they did have some necessary motivation not to stay around. Another person saw the same ivy like gel, but was able to gather some interesting information. They claimed that they were around this gel-like organism, and it did seem feeding off the tree. The person did confirm that it did emit a earth-like scent, causing bugs to be naturally attracted to it. One bug was attracted to it and landed right on it, and then it was doomed from the landing. The gel acted like almost like a spider web insect in for a digestive-like process. It seemed to extend small strands of itself like feelers of a jellyfish in which helped bring in its prey. That was not the only incident. Hospitals are well known for having a spectrum of people with issues. Being on night shift is a different kind of beast incarnation. It is, it is constantly dark outside. Trying to sleep during daylight, your friends and family are up during the day while you are asleep and so on. I remember this one particular night while working on one of the desks near the ambulance bays for the emergency room. Though I'm not a doctor, nurse, or any capacity to license or to practice medicine, I was just there for the muscle and help. 
with one ER coming in that could practically walk in off the ambulance. The staff put him in. The ER brought him in and got situated. About an hour later, I see him walking up to the desk and asking for the exit and proceeded to walk out. That's when I decided to walk by his room and just to check in. When I got to his room, he was still there. He finally said something about a lady in the room, but then his eyes rolled back. I happened to question and that's when the room started going off for codes. His body hadn't caught up to his soul when it left the hospital. I saw his spirit and pointed it straight out. Working in a hospital has taught me its own set of rules. There are so many I had to write down, but here's the ones I could remember. If you see the black eyed people hanging outside, do not let them in or give them anything. Tell them that the hospital is closed and lock the doors. If you hear a cat like voice asking, Hi! on the radio, do not answer. Do not go outside if there's a full moon effect out. If you hear animal howls, let it be known on the radio. Do not give the black-eyed people anything, or say yes, or let them in, even if they are asking for emergency medical care. Do not feed the owls. They are known to feed off of humans. If you see any versions of things, ignore them, but secretly watch them. If one gets in your vehicle, get out and go back inside. They will eventually leave. If you think you see any reincarnations of any paranormal things, don't say anything. This was Angel Renee. She was last seen in Logan, Ohio on Nove on the second month of the second day of 2011. Her physical description is a white female with brown hair and eyes. She has skinny or petite body and stands approximately five foot tall. Her aliases include Angel, Angel Sexton, or Andrix Hendrix, Angel Renee, or Angel Renee. She was last seen in Logan, Ohio. Her last known whereabouts or intentions are unknown, but at the time she had left her four-year-old daughter and a babysitter before she disappeared. Authorities believe she may have gone up to Columbus, Ohio, Ohio's capital. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go order some fast food. I got a appetite I'm going to cure. Hello? Hello? I see you. Run!